country. We're out in these cornfields, and the corn stalks weren't full height. They were probably about half height. And we parked on one of these little roads that run in between the cornfields. And we're just, because, you know, nobody's going to bother you out there. And there's no, at that time, there weren't a whole lot of people that lived out there, aside from, you know, the university and the and Dixon. And it was mostly farmers or cattle ranchers. And so there wasn't a lot of light pollution. And so we were sitting out there and we're like, okay, now get ready for nothing to happen. So, you know, we had a few sodas and, you know, some chips or whatever. And we're waiting and waiting. Nothing's happening. And then we start to see these lights way up high in the sky. It's kind of like, you know, we're, we're sitting on the hood and we're basically laying down on the hood, looking near straight up. And we could see, you know, I think I counted four, or I counted 17. I think she counted like 14. And they were basically having a dog fight at real high altitude. And they were making geometric patterns of squares, triangles. They were flying around each other at high speed and very weird. Nothing right? like a jet could do, correct? Oh, no, no. Yeah, uh, no jet's going to make a triangle, you know, or a square. It, it was just weird. And so we're laying on the hood of the car watching this stuff happen. And two of them uh, descended. And there are these two radio masts out there that are probably, I don't know, 20 miles apart, 10 miles apart, something like that. And... <clears throat> And they were they were going back and forth between the uh, the radio towers, like they were racing. And they would come to the end, and then they'd flip over, and then fly back, flip over, fly forward, flip over, fly back, continuously. I mean, this went on for hours. It wasn't like ten minutes. I mean, it was like several hours. We watched this, and in the in the light, what little moonlight there was, you could actually see that the two things that were doing the radio mass thing. We kind of stop looking at the, the stuff at high altitude. We're kind of fixated off to the left where these radio towers are. You could see that they were triangular shaped. Oh, wow. And <clears throat> yeah, and they had lights on the front. What we perceived to be the front, it was one of the points. And they're just going back and forth, going back and forth, going back and forth. And then they stopped. And they went past, and then one of them went past the radio tower. And the light kind of pivoted down and was like on the ground. And, you know, I mean, these are a couple, those towers are a couple hundred feet high, right? So you're not talking about something that's like it's 2,000 feet up. I mean, it's like, you know, 300, 400 feet off the ground. And we're watching it and it's coming toward us. That's when I get scared. Right. That's when we both got scared. And we kind of looked at each other and she was like, it's time to go now. So we, we got into the car as fast as we could. It was a it was a five speed, so I'm shifting, I'm speed shifting like I'm you know Mario Andretti, driving like ninety miles an hour through these like little roads in between the cornfields until we got out on the freeway. I like peeled out onto the freeway and drove as fast as I could to get back to our our apartment, which was only ten minutes away. And we got inside the apartment, we locked the doors, and we just got there looking at each other, going, "What did we just see?" But uh. The, the actual conversation was, you know, she says, well, I think it's gone past the tower. It's something effective. I was like, yeah, I think it's coming this direction. And she looked at me. She's like, I don't want to get probed. You know, it's time to go. But, well, you guys could have been. But the, yeah. And the fear, the fear that you feel is, is tangible. The other time, there was another time that something like that happened. I was driving home from work late at night. We had done maintenance. And so I was coming back home at like one or two in the morning and it's, it's about a, about an hour drive. And there's this one part where you drive through a valley and you're kind of on the side of the valley and you can kind of look down into the rest of the valley and we're cruising along, I'm cruising along and there's almost nobody on the freeway and it, it was foggy and I actually watched a triangle descend through the fog. So it was below a thousand feet and it flew right over me. The problem was, and I thought to myself, I'm, I'm screwing around trying to get my phone out to take video of this thing, right? But I can't, I can't seem to find the phone. And I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm a UFO guy. I should pull over. I should film this thing. I should document it. But I thought to myself, you know, I'm on the side of a fairly desolate highway, uh, even in the Bay Area. 
<laughs> they do exist. And if I pull over, somebody's going to hit me. You know, especially this time of night, somebody's going to not be paying attention. They're going to run me over. So as much as I want to take video of this and same thing as it's flying over my head, right? <clears throat> and, high, and it was huge. As much as I want to take a picture of that, I don't want to die. So I'm going to keep driving and keep like looking, driving, looking, driving, looking, you know, and I'm just going to have to remember it because I was convinced that somebody was going to hit me. Well, so, weren't you scared you know, though too? I, I mean, I'd be scared. I mean, even if you're a UFO guy. I was. I was very scared. I was scared because I also thought if I pulled over, it's going to know I'm here. And as much as I thought there were humans flying that thing, I really didn't want to find out, you know? No, I wouldn't want to, but even if they were humans or not humans, okay, I look at this way. I don't want to find out. How how many people maybe have been abducted and never returned? You know, that's the scary part. I mean, there's so many people gone missing, not just in the national force. People just vanished on road trips or hitchhiking or, yeah, maybe there's a serial uh, killer found some of them, but there's been just too many of them. So, I mean. I wouldn't want to be in that position, but you know, I had something like that happen with my first wife, Julie. We, we were in North Carolina on a job. I I didn't like it. So we decided to come back home and uh, we drove nonstop from North Carolina back to Seattle, but we were going through New Mexico. I think this is 19 in the early seventies, 72 or something like that keeps going in my mind. But uh, you know, I, I remember Maybe it was 74. I'm not sure. All I remember is that we were going in the desert and they did. They had a ridiculously high speed limit in uh, New Mexico at that time frame. You know, in Washington state, we had a 70 mile speed limit. Hey, I was really ecstatic. You know, hey, I think I was doing close to 100 or whatever it was in my GTO. And all of a sudden, and I was telling Peter Davenport about this several months ago because he had a weird encounter like something like this. And he said, he's got a lot of reports, like what I'm going to mention all of a sudden, you know, me and my wife are in the car and it got so bright inside the car and around the car that it hurt my eyes. It was like brighter than daylight. And I, and I'm thinking, and no, the car didn't die, but I, I, the first thing I'm figuring, okay, well, it must be a helicopter. I'm going to get in trouble for something, you know, because I was speeding, but I, I was under the speed limit, but I figured, okay, something's up. So I pull off the side of the road and the light was all around me and it was bright. And that's all I remember. Yeah. Now, I, the time, it wasn't, it didn't last very long, but I noticed when I got out of the car, it was dead silent. Okay. Yeah. And I recognized. Yeah. The, the, what I saw was silent. It was silent too. It made no noise. Yeah. There was not just that, but there was no noise period outside. It was like right. void of any type of noise. And then the first thing I realized, you know, being in the military, that wasn't a helicopter. It was no egg beater sound, no nothing. And, and then right. as, as fast as I was staring at it, it went poof and it was instantly gone. The thing, the thing that I, I find funny is that if, when I tell people those two stories, they're like, why didn't you wait? Why didn't you wait? And it's like, you know, <clears throat> as much as I know about the phenomenon, everything that I know about the phenomenon told me to run. And, is you know, when you see it at, at high altitude, that's one thing. When you see it miles away, that's one thing. But, I mean, when, this, when a huge triangle, a black triangle, descends through the clouds, through the fog, over your head, in front of you, you know, the first thing that pops into your mind is, is, oh my God, that's a black triangle flying over my head. The second thing that pops in your head is, I got to get out of here. And it's not as much as I could have gotten the most amazing photographic evidence in the entire universe if I had been able to find my damn phone. You, you know, everything that I know about the phenomenon, whether it's humans or aliens or hybrids or whatever, told me to run. And it's, it's a very frightening experience to see it up close. Yeah. It's I, not trivial. It, 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 it's it, not trivial at all. And it stays with you for a while. Because it stays with you forever. Yeah. I, I, can, I, I can still see it in my head. 
both both of those events. And and what's funny about the first one when we were in Davis is that when the next night after that we we're like, holy crap, we got to go back. So we go back. We've got cameras and all kinds of crap, right? Nothing. Nothing at all. No, but you we know, took other people. Nothing. But you did the right thing because you know what? If you would have, you know, oh, I know I did. if you would have tried taking pictures of it or whatever, you know, maybe you would have been abducted and you know dropped off miles away, you know, in the bushes somewhere, you know, no one ever find you again, <laughs> or you, who knows? Maybe you could have been their Big Mac for the night. Uh, we don't know what but they you know, eat, you know, or what they do, and I don't want to find out. The thing is, is that you know people forget that, you know, they see people talking about sightings on television or, you know, you listen to me on the radio or on a podcast and you think, well, you're a UFO guy, you're a UFO researcher, you research conspiracies, you you know, you, you're signed up for this and you seek it out, which I do. And, <clears throat> you know, you have a vested interest in trying to document and do all this stuff, which I do and I try. But at the end of the day, I'm still a human being. And when you see that stuff up close or it's coming towards you or it flies over your head at low altitude, I mean, this thing flew over my head at not at less than a thousand feet, right? And at less than a thousand feet, I know for a fact it wasn't an airplane because I watched it. I could see it very clearly and I could see the panels on it. I could see the rivets on it, you know, that's scary. It's, to tell, you, to tell you what it's like, it's like if you go to the end of a runway, right? And you stand out at the end of the runway and you're watching 747, 787, 777 fly over your head, Airbus A380s, A320s, whatever. You're standing at the end of the runway and you're, they're flying over your head on approach. That's what it was like. No. And, you know, I'm, I'm still a human being. It, uh, you see that and you're like, it's terrifying. It is true because at that moment, you know, it is no longer on TV. It's no longer in a book. It's no longer on a podcast or a radio show or some video you watched on YouTube. It's in front of you. What? And when you're actually confronted with the unknown, whether it's ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, the Jersey Devil, or whatever you see, it's scary. It is really because you cannot explain it. And, and, you do not understand what you're saying. Olaf, you know how many people, seriously, for the years, and I haven't told many people, but I have talked about it with family members and, you know, a couple of friends, you know, about yeah. my encounter, you know, uh, and it destroyed a good friendship because my friend, you know, not, not just being a medical doctor, his brother was a number one or one of the highest uh, rated criminal attorneys in the Tacoma area. His father was a superior court judge for Pierce County, Washington. You know, and he all he could think about is if it got out that we saw Bigfoot, that his, you know, who's going to come and see him as a medical doctor? And that's, you know, it wrecked a friendship over it because he was scared I was going right. to say something. I was scared he was going to say something. And we kind of, had, when we got back, we our friendship kind of dissolved. And we were good friends for a long time going out and taking pictures all over up and down the coast, you know, California and Oregon and lighthouses and all that stuff. But I'll tell you, people said to me, well, okay, you had a camera on you and you turned around and at least once or twice and looked at the Bigfoot. Why didn't you take a picture? Well, I, and but my answer was, I said, well, you know what? I was so scared. I pissed my pants. You think I'm going to sit around here and, and take a picture when something's chasing after me? You crazy? I mean, no way. I, right. no, the only thing that was in my mind, honestly, I wasn't even at that point, and I'm ashamed to say it. I wasn't even thinking about my friend at that point. All I was thinking about is getting to the car, starting the car, and getting the screw blankety blank out of there. No, I totally get it. Believe me, I totally understand. You know, and I'd gone through some weird, scary stuff in my life. And I'll tell you, that's the scariest. But, you know, also, it, it, for just people rot realizing weird things about UFOs, I really do believe they exist. We're being visited, be it our own. I mean, Art Bell and Ramona at one point, you know, Art said he saw the same thing, a triangle about a thousand feet above his head to go quietly by. 
uh, Johnny Carson. You remember Johnny Carson's show? Uh, 